came down, rolled down the mountain, hit the tent of a Midian, and we were completely annihilated, wiped out. Hey. The other Midianite gives an interpretation of the dream. He says, you know what? That's the sword of Gideon. I imagine the enemy knows the might and power behind the one that is not fully convinced. How many, of you, how many times do you have to come here? Did you know that we are in June 2010? How many times do you have to come here before you are fully convinced of who is behind you? That the enemy even knows. Now, barley, barley loaf, is the only time the Israelites would use barley is when they had no wheat. Because barley was used for the cattle and the oxen and the sheep when they had them. So when they were making a barley loaf, it's because they could not find wheat. And God was saying, I will even use the inferior thing to destroy the camp. The thing that you think has least power, that's the very thing that I will use to destroy the camp of the Midianites. Now, how did he get sword? Midian, a uh, barley loaf sword. Remember, the word of the Lord is a sword. The sword of the spirit is the Bible. That's what the Bible tells us. The sword is the word. And Bible tells us that Christ himself called him, himself the bread of life. So that's how we get sword. Christ is the word. Sword is the word. So he knew and understands. So remember, the weapon now that they're going to use is the word. So he equips the 300. I better hurry along. He equips the 300 with a clay pot, clay pitcher. In the clay pitcher is a little torch-like item inside. But it's hidden. Then he's also got a trumpet. Now, God is clever. He says, look, when you are going to attack them, you go place yourself around, all the way around, the whole camp of the Midian, 300 of you. Just go all the way around. When you are given the signal, you break the pitcher. Break the pitcher, and the light will shine. So you got to do it in darkness. you got to do it silent. you got to walk around. Sometimes we let the enemy too, know too much about our strategy. Sometimes you got to just be silent We've got to know when to attack. We've got to know how to use our wisdom in, in situations when we are going to overcome. So yeah, they spread them. Now look at this. God is so clever. 300 men around this valley and all the Midianites waiting to have war with Israel are situated right in a valley. And at the signal, they break the pots, the pitchers, earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. And sometimes we need to break our flesh in order to let the light shine. Can I have an amen, everybody? So they allow the light to shine. And when Midian gets up and they blow, they take this trumpet, one voice. Remember God said, I'm going to give you the victory as one man. Not everybody blowing a different tune. They took those trumpets and they blew. Loud and proud, not ashamed. They stood around that valley, 300, broke their pitches, opened up the light, and then they made a sound. And we need to understand some things here. Here come the Midians, running out now, out of their tents. Ooh. Now, how were they confused? Did you know that each man with a trumpet represented a company. And the man who represented the company, actually in that company would be a hundred. This is how warfare was conducted in those days. Each man represented a hundred people. So you have 300 going around the valley. One man looked like he had a hundred behind him. Another one looked like he had a hundred behind him. Another one looked like he had a hundred behind him. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Ha. So the Midianites, when they look up and the trumpet is being blown, they think there are three million people that are coming after them. And there is no one but 300 men ah, today. Can I have an amen, everybody? 
I'm preaching my heart out here and you guys are in confusion. Come on, you need to, you stop sleeping now, make you stand, hallelujah. Are you hearing me? They thought there were three million men surrounding them. So before they would give themselves into the hands of the, of the Israelites, they started killing each other, slaying each other. Before we get murdered, we better kill ourselves. This is your enemy, hallelujah. When we get our minds changed, can I have an amen everybody today? Each one recepted, represented a hundred. Now let me show you. Let me show you because I've got to close. This is warfare. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is warfare. Turn to your other neighbor and say, God will not leave you alone. When God calls you a man of courage, a man of valor, that's who you are. That's who you are. That's who I am. Come on. That's who I am. The I am factor. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. I am blessed. I am. That's who I am. I am able. That's who I am. I am anointed. That's who I am. I am determined. That's who I am. I am richer. That's who I am. Money. That's who I am. I don't have to put a fleece before the Lord. Hallelujah. My offering, hallelujah. Remember, this foot offering is fighting for some of you who are daring to believe that you're more than who the devil says you are. Gideon's offering fought for him. Amen. Now let me show you. Let me show you something. Three companies of angels. <laughs> Listen to me. When you start recognizing who you are, you've got to break your flesh. Self-interest has got to go. Selfishness has got to go. Self-absorption has got to go. I've got to see the bigger picture. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to see the bigger picture. Come on. You've got to see the bigger picture. You've got to see. Come on up there. I want to hear you. I've got to see the bigger picture. Up there. I've got to see the bigger picture. Come on. Everybody, I've got to see the bigger picture. 